This video will cover the operation of the Arclight Dynamics plate marker. Your first step is to plug in your air supply and turn down the regulators so you have no pressure. Next you're going to take the regulator that controls the slide and turn it up to about 20 psi. So your next step is going to be to load up Mach 3 for standard plasma cutting, the DTHC. So to, in order to test and control the engraver, we're going to be using this output 3 to trigger the engraver and the slide. So if you click on this output, it will trigger the slide to engage. And so this is how we're going to fine tune it. So when we hit the button and engage the slide, we want it to smoothly travel downwards and not hit too hard at the bottom. So to fine tune it, we can adjust the flow control valve at the top of the slide or adjust the input pressure in order to achieve the right speed and motion. Next, turn on your engraver by adjusting the speed control knob all the way up. Then you will turn the pressure on your engraver up to the recommended max pressure of 90 PSI. Do not go over 90 PSI as this may damage the tool. Next, go back into Mach 3 and operate the tool using the output 3 to verify proper operation. <laughs> So now we're going to discuss setting up the offsets and uh, use of the engraver in sheet cam. So what I have loaded up here is a small square, 2 inch by 2 inch square, with a uh, series of open lines in the form of X in the center of it. Now, um, if you have the engraver comes installed on your machine, you probably already have this engraver set test file already on your desktop in uh, both the sheet cam job file format and in a g-code format so um, you can open it up to follow along otherwise you can simply uh, use your 2d drawing software to create a small two inch by two inch square with a cross in the middle of it so um, our first step is to set up a engraver tool now um, there's a good chance you already have your engraver tool um, already set up, but if you don't, you're going to go to New Jet Cutting Tool. Okay. And then you're going to name it. I usually name it Plate Marker. And then you're going to go in their type and go down and select plate marker at the bottom. Now um, you're going to set the tool number. Now this is very important. Um, in order for the <clears throat> plate marker to work correctly, your tool number has to be set over 100. So we're going to set the name of this, this tool number to 101. So any tool over 100 will be treated as a plate marker tool. And so therefore, we'll receive the plate marker offsets and we'll also use um, the M7 command to fire the plate marker. So diameter on this, I usually set this to 0 0.001. And feed rate, you could set a variety of different speeds and you'll achieve different styles of engraving lines. Generally, I work with 100 inches a minute. You're going to set your cut height to zero and your start delay usually I find half a second works really well um, you can adjust this delay depending on what you find what you want is your engraver to turn on and touch the material and as quickly you start moving as possible the longer you allow your engraver to sit there the more of a divot you'll have on the start of all your lines. And so this doesn't look as good, particularly on small lettering. So 
Click OK. So now, down at the bottom here, we have, oh, I did not change the name of it. So now we have a plate marker tool down there. So the first step in setting up this file to be used for engraving is you need to have your engraving lines on a separate layer from the rest of the part. Currently we have one layer up here. So we this square and the two cross lines are on the same layer. So we're going to move these two cross lines to a separate layer so that we can engrave these lines and then plasma cut the outside. And this will allow us to set up, help us set up our offset to maintain, to allow us to have an accurate position of our engraving lines. So your first step is going to go up to contours and then you're going to select you can either select the whole thing, and then press control and click on the outside line and deselect it. Or you can go in, hit control, and start selecting your interior lines. Or what you can also do is in the contours mode, you can right click and then pull up select all open contours from all layers. And so since these are open contours, these are selected. So now with the two lines selected, I'm going to right click again and go move to layer, new layer, cross. So now I can set up, first start off, you're always going to be doing your engraving um, operation before your plasma cutting operation. So if we go down here, and we select jet cutting operation. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is set up the engraving operation. So for this, I want to use a no offset contour method. I'm going to select my layer as being the cross. I'm going to select my tool as being the plate marker. And now, um, you can select reverse direction. Uh, generally, it's a good habit to leave it selected because you'll want it selected for the uh, plasma cutter. It won't make a difference for the engraver. Um, and you're going to want no lead-ins on this. Um, so we want to cut engrave directly on the line so we're not using any offset and we're not going to have any lead-ins. So you click OK. It generates the engraving lines. It will engrave this one first and then this one. So next we're going to set up the plasma cut. On this one we're going to select outside offset, the default layer, and whatever I'm going to cut this out of. A lot of times I cut this out of 16 gauge. Some light material that allows me to set up my file correctly. And then I'll put in my standard lead in length. So now we have our engraver test file all set up and ready to go. So now we're going to go set up the post processor. So we're going to go into options and then go into machine and then click on post processor. Now, if you have your setup already, you're already set up, you should have this MP3000 THC Scriber. Now, this may also have a DCC in there, but um, for the most part, you will have a post processor that will specifically say Scriber listed here. Um, if you don't, um, and you don't have it in your options down here, give us a call and we'll send it to you. But um, this is really important that we're using the correct post processor that has a scriber option. So what you can do is we're going to open up and edit this post right here. And this is going to be the whole purpose of this activity of refining our offsets because the offsets for the engraver are set in the post processor. So if you pull up edit post, 
Okay, it'll pull it up in Notepad. And you're going to be looking here at these right here. The Scriber, off, for, it says Scriber X, Scriber Y, and Scriber Z. Okay, so this position right here, these are your offsets. Um, currently, we're set, and these are also in millimeters. Okay, so currently we're set to be to offset the X in the positive direction 50.8 millimeters, the Y direction 50.8 millimeters, and the Z direction um, up 36.4 millimeters. So these aren't correct for the current scriber. So we're going to make adjustments to that, and that is what we're going to cover now. So now you're going to go back into mock with a piece of uh, scrap material set up on your table and you're going to use the on um, torch button to pierce a hole very quickly. Just turn it on, turn it right back off. Your next step is going to be to zero out your X, Y, and Z axes in mock. And then manually drive your engraver so it's approximately over top of the hole. Now you're going to switch mock into step mode so that you can precisely move it a hundredth of an inch at a time and get the engraver directly over the center of your pierce hole. Once you find the direct center of that pierce hole you're going to look at your X and Y um, digital readouts in mock and you're going to write down those numbers. Now we're going to set up the Z axis height offset by pulling your engraver all the way down in the steel and then jogging it up so it no longer touches and then bringing it back down so you about have about a half inch to three quarters of an inch leeway. Once you've found that proper Z height offset, you're going to look at your DRO in mock for the Z axis and you're going to write down that number and that's going to be your Z axis offset. So now looking back in mock at your digital readouts, you're going to see this is going to be your preliminary offset for your engraver. No, so what I have is negative 2.7 in the x direction, negative 0.68 in the y direction, and a positive 1.45 in the z direction. So now we're going to write down these numbers, and you're going to have to change these numbers over to millimeters so that we can then move back to sheet cam and input them into the post processor. So now we're going to take our offset, which we've converted to metric, back into sheet cam. And go back to the options, the machine, and then your post processor. And we're going to edit your scribe processor. So the first thing we're going to do is go down here to your, your x-axis offset. So my offset converted to millimeters is going to be negative 70.85 millimeters. My y-axis offset is negative 17.37 and my z-axis offset is basically going to be 30 positive 37 millimeters. So this is where you're going to set up your offset. Now it's important to remember that when you set up your offset you're going to want your torch to be perfectly set up meaning it will be parallel perpendicular not parallel perpendicular to your material in both your X and Y directions. So you're going to want to pre-tune your torch so it's cutting vertically and you're going to want to lock it in position so that when you set up 
your offsets, they will be correct. Now, if at any point in time you have to make adjustments to your, um, your torch, say the angle of the torch, um, you're going to have to come back and redo your offset because your offset will no longer be correct. And so even a small adjustment in the angle of the torch can lead to a large difference um, in this offset right here. So you know, you're going to want to consider if, if you're doing just simple lettering with your engraver, uh, maybe writing um, part numbers or uh, whatnot, and precision isn't terribly important, you're going to be able to get away with a lot. But if you're looking for precision in placement of bend lines, uh, drill mark holes, you're going to need to pay attention to your offset carefully. And if you ever crash your torch, um, you're going to have to really make sure that it did not move off its setting or make sure you get it back in position. So now with that offset set, final step is going to be to post-process your file. Save your G-code. Then take it out to your machine and load it up on mock. So now we've loaded our part up, our G-code up in Mach, and one thing I just want to point out, you'll see that Mach is showing the offset between the cross and the uh, cut. So what's going to happen is um, basically uh, your plasma torch is going to go over, touch off on this spot, it will then raise up, offset, and then it will engage the um, engraver, engraving both of these lines. And then it will move back, drop down, and cut the rest of the um, square out. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do um, with this, particularly if you're using a small piece of plate like you'll see in our video, is you're going to need to hold your plate down or the engraver and the vibration will move the plate. Usually you're not going to have to do this on full sheets, but if you're trying to work with small parts, you're definitely going to have to have some form of hold down to prevent the engraver from moving the part. Um, the other thing that I like to do to take in consideration when I'm doing this test here is I like to set it up so that the center of my square is sitting on top of one of the slats. Um, that way, as it engraves the line and then comes back and starts to go around the square for the to finish out the plasma cut I can actually put a gloved finger on top of this to stop and and basically stop my part from falling through because what's going to be key is that we know which way is which on the part once you pull it off the table you're going to want to know which is the up and uh, which is the right of the part, the left, which is the top and the bottom. And if it falls through to the bottom of the pan, a lot of times it can be pretty difficult to tell exactly where you started out. A lot sometimes you can tell from where you set your lead in. Um, the lower right is where I usually have it. If you move it in a little bit, sometimes it's easier to pick out where that start point was and so you don't have to worry about holding it so once it's loaded up we're going to run it and uh, see how close our offset is Now you're going to take your calipers and the part and you're going to measure the distances between the engraving line in each edge of the part in each of the directions, your X and your Y, and you're going to determine how far you have to adjust your offset. So if you're slightly off on one direction, 
you're going to measure what that difference is, divide it in half, and then you're going to adjust your um, offset in your sheet cam post processor accordingly. And you'll continue doing this back and forth until you end up with the lines being dead on and you're really happy that your engraver is marking right where it needs to be. This concludes our video on the setup and operation of the plate marker.